Welcome to Introduction to Procedural Asset Creation, Lesson 5. In this lesson, we are going to go through the process of setting up a user interface for our procedural skate ramp. This will give us the ability to dynamically change the shape and size uh, of this particular object all within the Unity Editor. Okay, So this is a very important step when you are designing your procedural assets uh, for real-time use. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to bring up our parameter interface. And we also need to make sure that our digital asset is set up to be edited. So if it's not, remember, you can come down and right click on it and say, allow editing. All right. So ours is all ready to go. And all I need to do is bring up the type properties or that parameter interface window. All right. So to get started with building a new interface, all we need to do is come over here into the parameters tab. All right. This allows us to access all the parameters um, for this node. All righty. And then we also have a ton of different types of GUI elements that we can add. So what SideFX has done with Houdini is they've given us a visual way to build a user interface without having to write any code at all. All right. So the first thing I always like to do is just create a folder. And I'm going to give that folder a name. So I'm going to call this the simple ramp. All righty. And that basically will just, if I hit apply here, you'll notice now we have a new tab up here in our node. And it says simple ramp. So then I can put all my new GUI elements into this folder. And it just keeps everything nice and organized. You don't have to do this particular step. But it it is a good workflow practice because it keeps everything nice and organized for you. All right. So the first thing I want to do is take care of the basics. I want to take care of the width and the height, um, and the angle of the particular skate ramp, um, and maybe up, uh, give some color uh, inputs. That way we can change the color dynamically. All right, stuff like that. So let's actually um, first put in a float value. So I'm going to put this float value in there. So all you do is you click on the UI element you want to use, drag it into the folder, and there you go. Now you have a new float value. So if I delete that, what I want to do is give this a name. So now this first name is the internal name that Houdini is going to use and that Unity is going to use to identify this particular GUI element. Okay. So what I'm going to do is call this ramp angle. And then I always like to put PARM after it for PARM or parameter. Okay. And then I copy that and I put in a more easy to read name like ramp angle, something that makes sense to the end user here. All right. And what I want to do is give it a range and I'm going to lock it to those ranges because if we come into the actual graph, when we come back up to the beginning of the graph where we created that circle, I don't want the user to be able to completely change this. So it's really, really crazy like that, unless that's really what you want to go for, in which case we'd have to build a more complex asset. So what we need to do is we need to make it so that the user doesn't even know they can go that far. All right. So we just want to go up to 90. That's our max. And now our min is going to be something like 25. All right. So let's do that now. So our min is going to be 25 and our max is going to be 90. And then I want to give it some sort of default value. So the default value is going to be something that I want to have appear when I first drop this into my scene. All right, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to give it a value of 53. So I come up to the channels tab here in my uh, type properties window, and I'm going to type in 53. There we go. Now with all that set up, all we need to do is hit apply on the window down here. And you'll notice now I have a slider. So I have a slider that goes back and forth. This is pretty sweet. So I can actually copy this and create a dynamic relationship between the slider and those ramp angle values. So I'm just going to right click on the name, the actual label here, say copy parameter. I'm going to double click on my digital asset, find my circle node, and then I'm going to right click on the second value in this arc angles field and hit paste copied relative references. So when I do that now, I have a slider that now changes that value for me. And I don't have to jump into my node to make any sort of value changes. So now I'm creating an asset that is very 
dynamic and can change really quickly. All right, so let's do the same thing with the width, okay? So I'm going to just throw in a new float because these are all sliders and all float values. All right, so I'm going to call this ramp width PARM for parameter. All right, and then give it a better name for the label. All right, so now let's jump into our node here and figure out what are some good values for the width. So I'm going to come to my width line here. All right, so the distance, the minimum distance probably shouldn't go anywhere below 0.3. Or it just doesn't make sense at that point. And we can go somewhere up to maybe, let's say 4. 4 should be good. So we're going to do 0.3 and 4. And you can actually leave this unlocked so that when in Unity, if they want a value higher than 4, they can just type it in themselves. This basically makes it so the slider inside of the Unity inspector is clamped basically between 0.3 and 4, but it still allows you to type in a higher value. Okay? So then our default value is going to be 1. Let's do 1. Well, actually, let's do something a little bit smaller. Let's do something like 0.7. That's, that's good enough. Okay? So let's put in 0.7 for our default value. Alrighty. <clears throat> Very good. Again, we're going to come back up to that top level for our digital asset. And I'm going to copy off that ramp width parameter. And I'm going to paste the relative reference into our width line. So now I have two sliders. I can control the angle of the ramp. And I can also control the width of that ramp. All right, so that's pretty awesome. All right, but now we also want to be able to change the width and maybe the height of all this. Okay, so let's let's actually look at make, doing something like this. What we can do is we can actually we can change the radius, and that will allow us to also change the height. It also is changing the actual curvature, which is really good for skate park ramps. And we can change that length, so there's a little bit more of a lead-in to that whole ramp. All right, so let's set up two uh, sliders for that. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my type properties window again. Alrighty, and we need two sliders now, so I want one, two float values. All right, and I'm going to call this ramp height parm, and paste that down. Alrighty, and this one's going to be the ramp uh, length parm. Copy that off, paste that make a better label name. Alrighty, so now we need to come up with some good default values and arrange for this to work in. So let's go back to our node there. And now for the height, let's just say we get a value of 0.27. That will be our min. So for the height, I set it to arrange, so 0.27. And our max should probably be, be somewhere around 3. Let's do that. But again, we're not going to lock it. That way they can type in a number later on. And then our default is going to be 1. All right, so then let's get our length set up here. So let's find our minimum value. It's probably 0.35. Looks pretty good. Set up a range. We'll say our minimum is 0.35. And then our max. It's going to be something like 3. So that makes sense. And the default will be 1. All right, so I'm going to hit Apply. And when I do that, you'll notice that I get my two sliders here in my window. So I can copy these guys. Paste that in. Copy this one for the length. And there we go. So now we're actually creating a very flexible asset that allows it to be just about any ramp shape that you want. All right. So now we're starting to get something pretty cool here. It's very, very, very um, flexible in terms of the shapes that you can achieve with it. All right. But as one more parameter, um, what I want to do is actually make it so that either we can have a curved surface or we can have a straight surface. All right, it's more of a wedge. And now to do that, 
what we need to do is we actually need to look at our circle here. All right. And now the reason why we have a curved surface is because we have a circle. But we can easily turn this into a straight line by deleting all the middle points. Okay. And we can do that in a few ways. And the easiest way to do that is actually to use a resample node. So I'm going to hit resample. And let's just take a look at what this does. All right, so what it's going to do is it's going to take the, the line or the curve that we have, and it allows us to add either more points or less points to it. And now if we actually turn on the maximum segments instead of maximum segment lengths, we actually have control of the amount of points within that curve. So if I were to set this to something like 1, I actually get a straight line. But if I go to something a little bit higher, I get my curve back. Okay? So how do we actually take care of that sort of dynamic property inside of our interface? So what would I set up over here in order to control that sort of switching from flat to curved? All right, so let's actually go back into our type properties uh, window here. And what I can do is I can actually use a toggle button because what I get from my toggle button is a true and a false. Okay, so I'm just going to call this uh, ramp curved parm. How about ramp curve switch? How about that? Let's copy that off. So basically when this toggle is checked, we are going to receive a true value from it. And when it is not checked, we're going to get a false value or zero. So we get a zero or one. Okay, so I want to actually leave it so that zero is curved and one is straight. Okay, so I'm going to apply, and you'll notice that I get this um, new toggle box, and I can turn it on and off. All right, so let's turn it off for now. And we have to come into our resample node, and we actually have to build up a expression, and we need to do a check. So we get, what we need to do is build an if else type check. So we can do this pretty easily. If we start typing in if, okay, and you'll notice that the help tells us that we need an expression and we need to, to give it the true value and we need to give it the false value. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the channel ramp curve switch parameter, so that, that's what we set up over here in our editor type properties. So if that is equal to zero, that means we have a curved surface. So we're going to set the, the segments to 16. If not, if it's equal to one, we're going to set it to a value of one. So say just one point. So there you go. So now if I were to actually come up here and turn this on and off, I get a straight line or a curved line. All right. So just one more level of control so that now we can actually use this particular asset to get a wedge or some sort of quarter type pipe ramp. And you'll notice that if we come all the way down to the bottom here, turn on our last node, and we come up here and we turn that on and off, you'll notice that everything downstream of our graph is updating appropriately. So now we have a wedge, and now we have more of a ramp. Wedge, ramp. This is how you start to build in those more complex properties and really give your artists and designers a lot of power and flexibility to be able to edit their procedural assets. Okay? So the last thing I want to do is create a new folder because I want to isolate out the colors. So I'm just going to call this folder colors. And I'm going to give it two color parameters or GUI elements. And I'm going to call this my outline outline <clears throat> and always keep your naming conventions clean so out ramp outline color harm all right and then i space these guys out there we go all righty so i'm going to clamp these values from zero to one since it's color zero to one is also equal to zero to 255 all right, so then our color gives us three defaults. So this is our outline color, and I want to get that orange that we like to start out because it's our game tutor colors. 0.166 and zero. All right, hit apply. 
And then I want to do the ramp wood color. Paste that down. <clears throat> Alrighty, and we'll go to range, clamp it so we can't overblow the colors. And now I want 0.28 for each one of these, 0 0.28. Eight. There we go. So I hit apply. And then once again, I'm going to go up to the top level of my particular ramp here, and I'm going to copy off the wood color and paste it here. Do a relative reference. Copy off that outline color. Go to my outline color node and paste that. And with that, we've completed the setup for our procedural asset. We now have a procedural ramp that can also be a ramp of wedge type or curve type. We have control over that angle. We have control over the width, over the height, over the length, and we can control all the colors as well. And we also are producing the collision mesh for this asset on the fly as well. So the last step that we need to do now that we've made all these changes, we need to save all those changes to this OTL file. Alrighty, so I'm going to right click on it and say save operator type and then I want to close it so it can't be edited anymore and say match current definition. And once we do that, we now have a completed procedural asset from Houdini ready to be imported into Unity. Thanks so much.